All right, I am recording now, so there's your fair warning. All right, well, welcome. Thanks for joining us. I'm Liz Hill. I'm the Associate Director for the Ombuds Office here at the University of Colorado Boulder. And this is our third and final installment of our Fall Lunch and Learn series, which has been the Gossip Train. So as some of you might know, the University of Colorado Ombuds from Boulder, from our Denver and our Anschutz campuses um, have been publishing a series of blog posts all about gossip in our blog Ombuds, and that's O-M-B-U-Z-Z. If you're familiar with it, or if you aren't familiar with it, I should say, uh, check it out and, and go ahead and subscribe at ombuds.blog. I'll put that link in the chat in a bit here. Um, so again, thanks for being here. I see some messages coming in. Thanks, Teresa, for getting that in there. Julie, no problem. We don't need videos quite yet. We'll uh, open up videos towards the end here. All right, so thanks for, thanks for the uh, chat. So I'll kind of keep my eye on that. All right, so today's discussion is focusing on addressing harmful gossip and some strategies you can use when the gossip is about you. I am joined by my friend and colleague, Teresa Rollicky. She is the Ombuds Analyst at Pinterest. And for those of you who don't know Teresa, she was also formerly the Ombuds for our Denver campus here at the University of Colorado Boulder. And she is a co-founder of the blog I've mentioned, Ombuds. She did write several of the blog posts about gossip and has graciously agreed to join me here today to share some of her thoughts and insights Teresa, anything else you'd like to join or add? Sorry again. <laughs> I don't think so. Just happy to be here. I love, I love doing these lunch and learns. So I'm I've been really, really excited all day. Well, thank you. Thanks for being here. And I'll put your um, or you can do it if you'd like, uh, your LinkedIn link so that people who want to learn more about you and your work can um, get to know you better. You can go ahead and put that in the chat. And I'm just looking here at the chats. I, Selena, thank you for the shout out for Ombuds. I, I'm glad you appreciate it. So ho hopefully more will hopefully more will subscribe. All right. So before we get started, just some housekeeping. We do this every time. As I've mentioned, you are muted and your video is turned off. And this is just to reduce distractions. We will have a one poll and we will be asking some questions throughout. So if you haven't already, open up that chat box. Um, you'll use this to ask questions of your own as well as respond to ours. And if you're not comfortable using the chat, but you do want to talk to us about something, you know, feel free to reach out. I'll have our contact information towards the end and you can fill out, you know, reach out, schedule some time. I'm happy to talk to you. Anyone in our office is happy to talk to you about situations you may be um, trying to handle. We aim to keep these particular programs at 30 minutes, and that's just to provide a bite-sized amount of information and get you back to your day. And we are, as I've mentioned, recording, and that's in an effort to reach as many uh, people as possible. And later today, as always, I will send a follow-up email that will have any links we mention, resources, upcoming events, things of that nature, uh, so we can stay in touch and you can you know, know what's going on and have all the resources at your fingertips. All right, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. This is our roadmap for today. Some of you here did attend the September and or November Lunch and Learns, others did not. So I'm gonna do a quick recap and then we'll spend the remainder of our time today um, discussing, as I mentioned, ways to mitigate harmful gossip and how to address gossip when it's about you. I will keep an eye on the chat and keep an eye out for questions along the way. We've also reserved some time at the end for Q&A. All right, so first up, our recap. And I'll read the quote for those who maybe cannot see the slide. Some say our national pastime is baseball. Not me, it's gossip. That's a quote from Irma Bombeck. So as my recap, um, I'm just gonna touch really on three key points that we've covered in the past couple of months. First, the fact that gossip has many definitions, right? And while no one's really come to a decision on what the most appropriate definition is, is it essentially includes some similar foundations, some similar characteristics. It's essentially any informal evaluative communication, verbal or written, that's about individuals, issues, or groups. 
Okay, so that's kind of the basis and the premise we've been operating from. The second highlight I'll, I'll bring up today that we've, we've covered is the fact that gossip is at the core of our society, right? It's, it's part of our human relationships. It's been a social tool that we've been using for, for centuries. And it's truly how humans help navigate and understand the world around us, for good or for worse, right? For good or for bad. Um, so we've talked a lot about how that's the reality that we live in and then different ways to navigate that. And then finally, we've talked about how gossip can be judged as good, as neutral, as bad, and as toxic. And this can range from valuable informal chit chat and talk to malicious harmful slander. So all of these points have been discussed. The recordings are available um, of our previous Lunch and Learns on our website. And then of course that directs you to our YouTube channel. And, and go, we go into more detail on all of this in the Ombuds blog post. So again, feel free to look at those. There's nine of them, I think, in total, and they cover different facets of the gossip topic. And I'll share all of those links in the follow-up email. All right, so let's go ahead and have our, let's have a poll. Let me see if I can get this up and running for you. I'm gonna launch it. Our poll for today is, have you ever been the subject of gossip at work? Yes or no? And I see people answering, which tells me you have access to it. So let's get those responses in. And if you're comfortable sharing, feel free to use the chat and maybe share, you know, how did that feel when you when you either heard or learned the gossip about you at work? I'd love to hear what some people's thoughts are on that. Okay, it looks like I got 86%. Okay, 91 participation. And we got one more, one more person. No, okay, we got 22 out of 23. So I'll go with that. Let me go ahead and uh, share the results. I'll end the poll. And for those who can't see the results, we had 91% of you said yes, you have been the subject of gossip at work, and 9% said no. So um, thank you for sharing that. As you can see, the, the large majority um, of you have, have experienced to some extent or another. So, you know, especially Teresa's portion of today's conversation may be helpful if that comes up for you again. And I don't see any comments in the chat, so I'm gonna just go ahead and keep on going. Um, I'm gonna kick things off here with, you know, the navigation, when we do hear or we are um, part of a conversation that is leaning towards what we might interpret as harmful gossip and how do we in interrupt that? So the important question then of course is, well, how do we know when gossip becomes harmful? When, like, when, when do we cross that line? And the reality is it's not always an easy line to decipher. A general guideline might be that, you know, when idle chit chat becomes, you know, negative or inflammatory, maybe embarrassing to the person who's being spoken about, um, that's likely crossing the line into harmful gossip. Now, of course, that threshold might look different for different people. And the danger is that sometimes we might be hearing or saying something that we think is harmless when it's not. And so, we want to know like when you know some different different strategies, tips to um, you know interrupt that when it happens. But here are some questions you can ask yourself if you're not sure. You know, is it rejoicing in the misfortune of others? Um, is it creating or having a negative emotional charge or perpetuating conflict or perpetuating negativity? Is it potentially hurting or damaging someone or their reputation? Um, would you say it to that person or would you say it in front of them? And is it an unsubstantiated rumor? Is there any kind of basis of fact to support what's being said? So in the chat, go ahead. I'd love to hear your thoughts before I share um, a few, I guess, nine, nine tips with you. Um, when you've seen or heard harm, what you would deem harmful gossip in the workplace, what have you done? How have you addressed it? Go ahead and use the chat. Give us some thoughts. I'd love to hear your ideas. And I'm guessing there's going to be some overlap in what I'm about to share. Everyone's chat's working. I don't know. Okay, thanks, Scott. Is that appropriate? Is it helpful? Yeah, right, exactly. Ask, ask me that question. Right. And so you, it sounds like you would directly ask that walk away. Yes, Valerie, we're going to, we're going to talk more about that. 
So we have, so far we have directly intercede and, and ask a question, you know, is this helping? You can subtly walk away, that sends a message. Anything else before we, before we move on? And either the gossip isn't my experience of the person. Yeah, so maybe add some additional information that would counter what's being said. Thanks, Val. Thanks, Julie. Okay. I, Selena says, I asked them what motivated them to make those statements. Yeah, where's it coming from? What, you know, is there something else going on here? Yes, good. Ask them, get to the underlying motivations. Good. Okay, thank you for sharing that. All right, for the sake of time, I'm going to move forward. I want to make sure we have plenty of time for all Teresa's great content as well. So here's some tips. Um, these are not linear. It's not a list. Um, but some things that you, know you can do um, if, if you are in this situation and maybe feel stuck. The first thing is stop it in its tracks, right? So you hear something, and, and this came up in one of the comments, you hear something that's being hurtful, malicious, disrespectful, et cetera. You know, maybe you respond with a comment. I'm sorry to interrupt. I'm not comfortable talking about such and such person or such and such situation, right? Or perhaps deflect it. Um, offer something positive, as, as Julie said, right? Offer something positive about the person, the situation being discussed. And the and two keys here are politeness and humor can go a long way. That can help de-escalate so it doesn't escalate into something bigger or create an argument or make things worse, right? Using politeness and humor. The second thing could be addressing the gossipers. Maybe it's speaking with the gossipers privately, one-on-one, -on -one, and just tactfully sharing you know, how the behavior, what you observed, and how it's affecting and disrupting the work environment. The third could be changing the subjects. And I, didn't, I don't think I saw this in the chat, but this is kind of an easy, easier, maybe for some people, way to you know, say something neutral, maybe, you know, shift the conversation, weather, right? That's a pretty neutral topic. Um, well, maybe not. I don't know. It depends. But you know, talk about the weather or change it into something that's not going to that's going to kind of you know deflect and take away from from the subject. Uh, the fourth would be redirecting, and we see this a lot um, when we talk with folks in the ombuds office. People come in complaining about what someone else is saying to them, and they don't know what to do with it because it's about someone else, and they don't know how to address that person or or how to redirect them. So, you know, what we often talk with people about is giving them tools and skills to, you know, say to that person, um, you know, maybe, you know, I can't, I can't do anything about this, right? This is about so-and-so and redirecting them to talk to that person directly to address whatever their concerns are um, or what the issue is. And of course, depending on the concern, it might be more appropriate to take the concern, um, you know, not directly to that person, but to someone else who does have some authority to look into it um, and maybe take some appropriate action if necessary. And a lot of that is going to depend on the comfort level, the, the approachability, and of course, what the issue is. Um, next, I would say modeling the desired behavior. You know, when others around you engage in harmful gossip, Letting them know you're not going to participate. And you can do this, as Scott said, or others have said, you know, in a direct statement, or you can do it in the more subtle acts that we, we, we saw some in the chat, right? Um, you know, changing the subjects or excusing yourself from the conversation, walking away. This over time will send the message to stop. The next one is sharing information judiciously. This really gets into what Teresa is going to be talking about, right? Um, she's going to be talking about discussing what to do when gossip is about you. But one anecdote to help avoid generating gossip about you in the first place is to really be thoughtful about what you're sharing, what personal information especially you're sharing, and who you're sharing it with. You know, the key here is identifying those trusted coworkers, um, as well as identifying the serial gossipers, right? Because if you're hearing someone gossiping about others, likely if they have food for fodder or information to use, they're gonna talk, they're gonna use it and talk about you too. So being being careful about that. Um, the next one is identifying patterns. So for those who have taken crucial conversations, you may, this is kind of similar to um, identifying, you know, addressing incidents versus addressing patterns. So if you see a pattern of behavior that's causing harm, and, and destruction you know, to the work environment, rather than addressing a particular incident that might have happened, 
again, pulling that person aside and having a conversation to candidly and you know, without blame, but tactfully and candidly sharing the impact that chronic gossiping is having. Um, and also I've, I've had situations where it's been helpful to point out certain topics that are creating um, negativity or having a negative impact on team members that the person may not have realized, they may have been oblivious to, the fact that when they keep bringing this up, it is having a detrimental impact. So, you know, pointing that out to them um, and maybe even just sharing topics that, you know, might be offensive to others, helping, you know, helping them understand that. Um, next is elevating if your attempts to address um, gossip or the gossipers directly are unsuccessful, or maybe you've decided you're not comfortable doing that for one reason or another, you could consider going to the boss, getting the boss involved. Um, you know, it really is up to our leaders to help support healthy work environments and addressing this behavior to promote, you know, more positive cultures. And of course, if the boss is the problem, um, and you're not comfortable, um, you know, you could, if you are comfortable, I should say, you could revert back to, you know, stopping it in its tracks or redirecting. But if you're not, you can always elevate it to the next level of leadership. And that's, again, a place where ombuds could help you kind of sort through that and navigate the, that path. And then finally, I'll just share um, uh, encouraging positive gossip. Now, I know a lot of you, um, you know, I see Julie's, yeah, I see Julie and, and Scott having their own banter here in the chat. I love it. Um, but finally, encouraging positive gossip. I know many of you are like cringing at the thought of any gossip, right? I've had visitors say, no, no gossip, zero gossip. And I get it. And if that's you, then I would just say, remove the word gossip. Think of it in terms, it's a reframe, right? Think of it of how you can help create a culture where people share positive information, positive stories about work, about themselves, about each other, um, communicating what you're proud of at work, acknowledging colleagues for a job well done, for going above and beyond. Maybe starting like we do at the Ombuds, we um, start our team meetings with wins, you know, start your morning huddle with wins. What's going well? What worked? Um, what kudos can you give each other? And this will help reinforce desired values and behaviors. So I'm going to um, just check in here, make sure there aren't any burning questions. Um, I see some sports talk, I love it. Um, by the way, did everyone hear that Deion Sanders is our football coach? Yes, I have to give a shout out for that. It's very exciting. Um, okay, anything else before I turn it over to Teresa? Doesn't look like it. Who's gonna now shift the focus a bit? Like, what is it? You know, Teresa, what do we do when it's about when people find out the gossip's about that? What can they do? Yeah, great question. And actually, I want to go back and say a quick anecdote about your last point um, about engaging in positive gossip. And when I like had one of my first jobs in the corporate world out of grad school, um, I worked for Nationwide Insurance as a uh, um personal lines underwriter. And so it was just a giant room of cubicles. And um, I noticed early on that there was a major culture of people gossiping. And I was like, I want to, this is my first big job and I want to be respected and I want to, you know, move up in the company. And um, I made it a point, I am not going to engage in any gossip. And I worked there for years. And toward the end of my time, like after year three, I was standing around with some colleagues and there was a manager there and I, I don't know, I made a joke about something and the manager made a comment like, oh my gosh, Teresa, you have a sense of humor. And I, I was like, wait, well, yeah, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> of course I do. And I, what I realized though, was that my hard stance about all gossip is bad and I'm not going to engage in all of it really led to myself not showing my personality. And I think also not building relationships at work. Maybe people didn't trust me because I wasn't engaging in some, some conversations. And so it's, it, I, I appreciate this encouraged positive gossip. Could there have been ways that I still could have engaged in those, you know, water cooler conversations or cubicle conversations to build those relationships and trust. Whereas maybe for years, people thought of me as being kind of cold and turned off. So anyway, I just wanted to give that anecdote for the, the grayness around the impact of gossip. Yeah, thank you. Um, That's a good one. Yeah. Thank you for doing that. 
Um, so what do you do when it's about you? Um, this is a huge piece, like, and it, and it touches, it hits your heart. It hits your ego. Um, and it can feel embarrassing and, and confusing and uh, challenging. And so uh, Lisa Neal, uh, one of our ombuds at CU Institutes, wrote a blog post on the ombuds.blog about this. And so I'm just going over some of the tips that she shared. Um, and she focused on um, an article that Joseph Grenny wrote. And Joseph Grenny is one of the founders of Crucial Conversations. So why don't we just look at a quick video from him and um, see what he has to say. And before you press play, Liz, um, yeah. this is one approach. It's not the only approach. So we're gonna talk about one approach that can be helpful. And as Liz mentioned earlier, your ombuds office is always a resource to talk about support and how to do this, or do you need to address the approach? So, okay. Yeah, great. Right. We're ready. If you've heard someone has said something slanderous about you, there are two things you must do if you want to solve the problem without becoming part of it. The first is when you hear that someone has gossiped about you. This conversation almost inevitably includes a requested oath of secrecy. Patty approaches you and says, hey, I need to tell you something Hernando said about you, but you can't tell him where you heard it. This is a crucial moment. Because if you agree to Patty's terms, you have engaged in gossip yourself. You've allowed Patty to talk about another person behind their back with no accountability. Don't do it. I've developed a standard response to this moment. I say, please don't put anything in my head that you don't want me to use in a healthy way. If you're not willing to be accountable for what you're about to tell me, then don't tell me. If you manage this step right, the next step is easy. Approach Hernando and say, Patty just told me that in a conversation with you yesterday, you said, and repeat verbatim what you were told. Do this from a place of curiosity and not of judgment. Let them confront the information rather than confronting you. If they deny it, say, that's strange. How about if you, Patty, and I get together after our 3 p.m. meeting to figure this out? In short, the best way to stop gossip is to hold people accountable for it in a healthy way. Thanks for watching. Visit cruciallearning.com slash Okay, Teresa. So one of the things that, that Joseph Granny said is, you know, don't listen if you can't act. And what he means by that is if you can't go talk to the main person who's bringing this up, if you can't do something about what you're hearing, then you know what? I don't even want to hear it. Because what happens then is, and this is tempting, of course you want to know what that is, but it changes the way you engage with people. But when you can't be open about the fact that you have that information, now everyone is in, in the group is engaging or in the relationships, they're engaging in a manner that, that you don't all have the same information, or at least you don't know that you all have the same information. It changes the group dynamics. And that's really not helpful at all. So main point, don't listen if you can't act. The next thing you want to do is when you are at that point that, yes, you can go directly to that person is you want to first address the main issue. What is the concern that's coming up in the gossip? You know, like, is it that you um, are doing a bad job in the presentation or or that you're slacking uh, as, a, as an employee or whatever it is, address that piece first, the content, which is really hard because our egos, our feelings want to address, hey, why are you gossiping about me? Why are you talking about me? This isn't helpful. Why didn't you come to me first? That's what we want to talk about first. But there's a reason why we do that second. So first, talk about the issue. Okay, help me understand why you're feeling that, you know, I've, I've heard that you feel like I'm not pulling my weight. Can we talk about that? The second, the reason you talk about the process and by process, I mean how the gossiping was happening, how you were speaking to someone else about me and not coming to me directly. You discuss that second, because once you've addressed the main issue and you've done so in a way that makes the other person feel comfortable, which we'll talk about in a minute, then they're able to, to feel safe and comfortable also naming, yeah, you're right, I shouldn't have done that. Or yes, next time I'll come to you. So talk about the main issue first, and then you can talk about process. Um, so I have another video 
Um, and this is just another example. And this is an example taken directly from Lisa Neal's scenario in her blog post. Um, but I made a quick little animated video to see how these tools and steps can play out in a scenario. This morning, Sam gave a presentation on a group project. During lunch later that day, John approached Sam to let Sam know that Jesse did not like how the presentation went. Sam remembered Joseph Grenny's first tip when it comes to gossip. Don't listen if you can't act. So Sam let John know that Sam would be grateful for the feedback as long as it would be okay for them to speak directly to Jesse. That way, if John said, no, Sam could just say, okay, then I would rather not hear what they had to say because if you can't act, don't listen. Now, if John said that, yes, that was fine, that way Sam could go directly to John to hear the feedback. Luckily, John said it would probably be okay for Sam to speak directly with Jesse. So Sam and John both went to chat with Jesse. Sam led by saying they understood Jesse had some feedback on the presentation and they'd like to hear it. John took some time to highlight the concerns they had with the presentation. Sam made some notes and they all discussed how to make improvements for the next presentation. Next, Sam wanted to address the process of how they came to know that there were concerns. Sam said that they really appreciate this feedback and they asked if they could agree that they would discuss this directly all together from the beginning and not have to hear anything a second hand. They all agreed. Okay, so this is just a quick scenario to see those skills play out. Does, do things work out this nicely all the time? No, of course not. Um, but I like the repetition so you can get a, a handle on what are the steps and what are the what's the order and what can it look like. Um, and a key, and Joseph Granny talked about this too, but the biggest thing from my perspective too is to be curious and not defensive. If you come in being defensive, then there's no reason that the other person is going to think, oh yeah, it's totally safe for me to come to you with feedback directly instead of around your back. If you are defensive, if you're putting up a wall, then that's even more reason for them to just keep doing the same pattern they had already been doing. Um, and I'm seeing in the chat a conversation around power dynamics as well. And I just want to highlight that that is absolutely a huge piece. I actually was just giving a training um, and talking about how power, uh, power dynamics uh, are key in all of our interactions. And so paying attention to that is really, really important. And it might change your approach. And um, I love the suggestions and ideas that are in the chat. And also, again, your ombuds office is always a resource. Hey, I want to do this approach, but this person is two lines above me. How might I navigate that? There's always a way to talk about it. So this, and, and especially in those scenarios, because believe it or not, especially when you're talking with someone who has more positional power than you, or even different types of power than you, um, there can be sometimes even an insecurity in that. And so you almost have to create, this is counterintuitive, but creating even more safety and more curiosity enables that person to be more honest and vulnerable with you. And then they'll be able to provide it to you first. It's not the way that it should be. It's not the fair way. Um, and yet it's really effective. So Okay, how in the world do you behave non-defensively? And I'm gonna do this quickly because I see we're right at time. Um, but so there are some, some tips that you can do and we have some blog posts and I know Liz also has some uh, um, past lunch and learns on, on non-defensive communication. So there are more resources for this if you're interested. But the very first and foremost thing that can help you is to breathe. And I tell people, always breathe out first. It's counterintuitive again, but usually you're holding your breath. So breathe out first and then let yourself just breathe in and out. Focus on that breath. The good news is if you're breathing and you're not doing anything else, other people are so uncomfortable with silence, they'll keep talking. But because you're breathing and giving space for them to talk, will also become more comfortable. The next goal you have while you're breathing is to make, okay, I'm here and my only goal 
is to understand them fully. Make that your only goal. Yes, you're going to talk about process, but not yet. That's not your goal yet. Your goal is to understand them fully. Okay, how can I do that? Well, you can um, buy yourself some time. That can also be really good. And you buy yourself some time. Um, Liz, can I get a couple of clicks for me, please? Um, by asking some questions. And those, even if you're so upset, if they're hitting you, I'm going to breathe. And I'm just going to say, tell me more about that. Okay. Um, I understand that that's how you feel. I want to hear more about that. So ask those curious questions just to buy that extra time. And the real key here is let them do most of the talking while you're breathing. The goal also is that when you're creating this space for folks, you're breathing, you're understanding them fully, you're letting them do the talking, you're asking curious questions, that indicates to them that you're really listening and that that is a safe space. Their defenses are going to come down, you're going to talk about the real content, and then you're set up really well to have that next conversation of moving forward, when things like this come up again, I'd really appreciate if you came to me directly. What do you think? How do you feel about that? So those are just some quick some quick tips. I know 30 minutes is a short time to go through this and I hope that it's helpful. Um, and I'm, I'm so happy to be here, but, and I'm happy to stay on a little longer in case people wanna stay and, and ask yeah, questions. That would be, that'd be great, Teresa, if you could hang on. I did put in the chat, I know we're at time, so if you need to hop off, thank you so much for being here. I will follow up with recording links and other links so you won't miss a you won't miss a beat, I promise. Um, but for those who want to stay for a minute, we can certainly go to QA and stop the recording, let you unmute and you take your video off if you want to have a more personal conversation. But Teresa, anything you want to add before we do that? Just to normalize all of this, right? And it's yeah. this is we're 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 working in the gray here, you know, just as Liz has talked about in her past lunch and learns with your other guests and in the blog posts. Um, gossip isn't all good or all bad. It can get really gray. And then even how you navigate it can be really tricky. And so being aware is really key. Talk to your ombuds or a colleague or someone you feel safe with, um, trying to make sense of it and the breathing. Just breathe through it. It's, it sounds really um, simple. And yet I found that it's the biggest thing that helps me personally. It's like all of those tools that I build learning this stuff, I can actually access when I'm breathing. I can't access it when I'm not. <laughs> That's right. And I'll just, you know, for those who saw uh, Jen Mani's presentation, um, gosh, last spring, I guess, on you know, managing our own defensiveness. It's not a matter of not ever becoming defensive. It's right. It's a bit a matter of like preparing ourselves, like Teresa's talking about. And one of the things she talked about too, like you talk about breathing and, you know, buying, buying yourself a little time is also like taking that sip of water. I don't know if you saw that one, Teresa. Oh, um, great. Uh, yeah. Like, you know, you just kind of like, you know, take a sip. <laughs> Right. Let your let yourself kind of uh, recalibrate a bit. <laughs> I love the, it. Yeah, that's and no one. The great thing is the other person doesn't know that that's why you're doing it. Right. <laughs> that's right. I love that tip. That's great. Yes. OK, so let's um, let's go ahead. I'll put this up. I'm going to stop the recording. Um,